in short, the more money you spend on a camera, as a general rule, you get better thermal, thermal sensitivity and therefore are able to find moisture in, in places that a cheaper camera would simply not be able to recognize. Insulation deficiencies are probably one of the more common deficiencies we find. Um, if you look at these photos, up in the left-hand corner of each image, you'll see a temperature. That's the actual temperature measured at the panels where uh, the bright spots are, or the hot spots. And as you can see, every place where there's insulation missing, that's the equivalent of having a space heater mounted on your ceiling in the middle of summertime. Um, your air conditioner has to run nonstop to make up for that, for that heat being pumped into the room. In fact, this would be a really good example of a high delta T environment. We have an extremely warm area behind the panels, which is the attic, and a nice cool air area at the living space. Um, because of that, you'll notice we can see the ceiling joists, we can see the studs inside the wall, and we can even see scattered insulation laying on the ceiling panels. Very, very valuable information for the homeowner. Is there any special training involved? Absolutely. There are numerous, numerous training and certification agencies that exist for thermographers. Um, I really wouldn't say that uh, one is better than any other, other than to say that uh, it's always best to get certified by an agency that also provides training in building sciences, because there's a little bit more to thermography than just picking up a camera and waving it around. At the end of the day, though, there is absolutely no substitute for experience. Um, to date, we've performed, uh, I think today is number 670, about my 670th infrared inspection to date. Roof leaks. This is one that is every inspector's nightmare. If there's one thing that can end up in a lawsuit, an unhappy client, an unhappy real estate agent, is for an inspector to overlook a roof leak. Um, when we walk on a roof, we largely cannot tell if one is leaking simply by looking at the surface. Now you'll notice in the bottom images, this, this is a lanai area, there's a ceiling fan in there, and the light globes were actually full of water, and you could see the water in the images. So we knew there was a problem. Um, infrared allowed us to find out where that problem was coming from. If you look at the images of this lanai roof up at the top, you can actually see the dark spots along the area where the roof meets the house. Those dark spots were the moisture signature where rainwater was bypassing the flashing. This house is right on the beach, um, not too far from here, and this is one of those houses that are built up on stilts. And what you're looking at here, uh, this house was open underneath at one time, and, and the uh, owners decided to enclose this area and they turned it into a garage. In fact, in the right-hand image, you could see one of those heavy, uh, looks like a telephone pole in the image, and that's exactly what it is, uh, one of the stilts. Um, anyways, they built this wall up, and the wall, there was a lot of decay along the bottom of the wall. When we looked at those decayed areas with the thermal camera, we could actually see where water was bypassing the moisture barrier. So again, thermography is not always about finding things that are hidden. More often than not, it's about providing more information about a condition that you already found. And this is very valuable to the people that have to fix this house because you can tell them exactly where the problem lies. So. The inevitable question, how does this technology benefit everyone involved in the real estate transaction? And this is one of the few pieces of technology that does in fact benefit everybody involved, uh, starting with the person buying the house, the person ordering the inspection. You simply get more information from an infrared inspection. Even when conditions are poor, an infrared inspection will provide more information about the property than a traditional naked eye inspection. From the seller standpoint, sellers typically do not like home inspectors, and, and for obvious reasons. Um, they're trying to sell their house, and an inspector is going to come in, and they're going to pick that house apart, trying to find out what's wrong with it. Thermography will actually benefit them, because when we do find problems, 
we don't merely point the problem out, but we could diagnose the problem. So while they're in that stressful mode of trying to sell their house, it's a lot easier to fix things when you know exactly what to fix. Um, they can determine the best repair method. The repairs are often less invasive. In other words, to, to fix a moisture problem or a leak, instead of having to poke a bunch of holes in the wall, the thermal camera already shows them where to poke the hole. So again, it does speed the repair process. Um, as far as from an agent standpoint, smoother transactions, speedier repairs. Uh, and at the end of the day, when it comes to real estate agents, uh, this is all about having happier clients and reducing their liability. Um, so infrared is very valuable to the agents involved. From my standpoint, my ability to document component function at the day of the inspection simply cannot be measured. Again, this all goes back to the finger pointing involved if something fails. Uh, the obvious question arises, did, did you inspect my air conditioning system? It's not working now. And the answer to that question is a photograph. A uh, picture's worth a thousand words, and we can embed that information into their inspection report. Flooding. Uh, this is one of those examples where we can really provide a lot of information and thermography makes the difference in the diagnosis you make. This was a townhome. No, it actually wasn't a townhome. It was a two-story house. Um, down in the living room, we found a moisture signature at the ceiling that you can see up in the left-hand image. Um, there was nothing visible, so we did know there was a problem up there. Once we got upstairs, we found a leak under the air handler. Now this isn't a serious problem usually. Typically uh, the condensation drain is blocked. However, when we looked at the rest of the second floor with the thermal camera, we had found out that this water had literally spread throughout three rooms. We would have never saw that with, our naked, with the naked eye. Uh, the water was underneath the carpeting padding. You couldn't see it. You couldn't feel it. Uh, it wasn't squishing under feet. But uh, at the end of the day, we not only had to recommend uh, an air conditioning specialist to fix the condensation leak, these folks had to bring in Surf, Surf Pro to clean up all the water damage that it created so that uh, it wouldn't lead to mold and uh, decay. And the good news is, is that very often we don't find anything wrong during our inspections. Uh, we simply use it as a means to document performance of components within the house. Um, the photo on the left is quite telling. We could actually see the hot water passages inside this fixture. Just to give you an idea of what, uh, how sensitive these cameras can be uh, in the right hands. Does this technology create any problems or have any unintended consequences? Um, unfortunately, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, in the wrong hands, it can be very dangerous. Um, these are not toys. Uh, the fact that they are getting cheaper means that anybody can go out and buy one and start waving it around. Um, probably the biggest mistake that inspectors and thermographers make is writing up conditions that don't really exist or that are normal. So again, training and certification is huge when it comes to thermography. Uh, you definitely want to make sure your inspector is trained and certified. Um, lastly, this technology should not be used to unbuild a house. And, and let me give you a good example of that. If you remember back, we looked at some insulation anomalies. Every house that I go through, I will find some insulation anomalies. And very often, these are fairly minor. We do not write up all those anomalies as defects. And the reason for that is that when the house was built, the builder did not use an infrared camera to verify the performance of his work. So going in behind him and inspecting it to, to, to a level that is uh, just light years beyond what the builder does is a little bit unfair to everybody involved in the transaction. So it does take a little bit of business sensitivity uh, when using this technology. Excuse me. Again, here's a, another example of missing insulation. This was a second floor bonus room um, with kind of a domed ceiling. We actually have two images here side by side, and that was the actual shape of the ceiling. And that big bright spot in the center is 
a place where they did not insulate the house when it was built. Interestingly enough, <coughs> excuse me, interestingly enough, there was no way to access the attic in this house. So this condition was likely overlooked during previous inspections. The infrared camera was able to point this out and uh, get this fixed for the potential buyer. What's really telling here is, is if you look at the top left of the screen, look at the ceiling temperatures that we found. That is one giant 100 degree space heater radiating heat down into that room in the middle of summertime when there's an air conditioning trying to fight that whole process. The air conditioner for this second floor probably ran nonstop 24 hours a day, costing these folks a whole lot of